Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of CPP for Beginners.com's continuing C++ tutorials. And this is it, guys. We're finally at the lesson that we've all been waiting for, where we start dealing with objects. It's classes. Now, my, uh, my Java teacher, my intro to Java teacher, gave me the best definition of what an object is ever. I mean, really, ever. It, it was beautiful. She said, an object is a thing. And, and in truth, that's all it is. It's a thing that holds stuff. And that's going to be our operating uh, definition of a, an object, or specifically a class in this case. So when we define a class, typically we're going to want it to have file wide scope so we'll declare it outside of um, int main well you have to declare it outside of int main well that's mostly true um, and in this case it's like any other variable of sorts um, we're going to name our class what's a good thing that we see all the time oh car we're going to take a class and name it car now you'll notice that when I set up the scope operators, well, NetBeans did it for me automatically, but for all of our non-NetBeans using counterparts, there is a semicolon after the ending scope operator. So, when we're dealing with objects, there are going to be what are known as access modifiers. And access modifiers basically tell us who can and cannot use this object. Um, in this case, we're just going to be using public access modifiers. We're going to talk more about private, um, maybe during the case study. I'm not sure if I want to talk about it before then. So what we're going to do is we're going to say public, just like that. And then on the next line, we're going to talk about some uh, characteristics of a car. Um, when I think of a car, I typically think of wheels, so maybe num wheels is a characteristic of a car, because every car is a certain number of wheels on it, right? Um, let's say another one's uh, num windows. And again, I'm just saying num as, as an abbreviation for number. That's not like any special keyword or anything. Um, Let's see, every car has fuel economy, so I'm going to say a double uh, MPG, which for all of my uh, UK viewers might be a kilometers slash liter? Question mark? Anyone? Um, and then lastly, we're going to have uh, an array of characters. We're going to call it name, and we're going to just make it 80, because I don't think any cars have names that are quite that long, although I could be wrong. So, you'll notice that I've included vector up here. Um, you guys might want to do the same. So, first things first, we're going to ask the user how many, uh, how many cars do they want to add? So we're going to do a C out and then ask how many cars would you like to add? And we're going to just set this as int x. So we'll just see in for x here. Get my mouse out of the way. And then we're going to create two vectors. One's just going to be a normal vector, the other one's going to be an iterator. And so in this case, we're going to take a vector, and instead of doing a vector of ints or doubles, we're going to do a vector of cars. And that's totally legitimate. That's what a template class is made for. And we're going to call it carvec. Now we're going to make another one. Again, a vector of cars, and this one's going to be an iterator. And I missed one of my colons there. And then we're going to call it car iter. 
Okay, now we're going to construct a for loop, and we're going to say for int i equals 0, i is less than x, i plus plus, and then we're going to propagate it the same way you would kind of expect. Now I'm going to toss in a cn.ignore here. Um, because I am going to be taking in uh, for a character array here. So if I don't use a cn.ignore, it's actually going to be somewhat problematic. And let me get rid of all this other crap on the side so you guys can pretend like I'm paying attention to this. Okay, so each time through this loop, we're going to have to ask questions about the vehicle. So first time through, I guess we're going to ask for the name first. So we'll ask, what is the name of the... Actually, you know what, we're, we're going to do this easier. Name of car. And then we're going to do a cn.getLine. Um, hmm. You know, there is a way that I could do this using just a vector. But for the sake of making it easier, I'm actually going to make a car and call it temp car. And this car is just going to be a, a temporary sort of holder. So now when we're dealing with a, a normal variable, let's just say we had a variable named name, we would say name comma 79. And we leave that 80th character empty so it can be a, a null zero. We covered that, oof, maybe five or six lessons ago. But in this case, you'll see that there is no variable name name. When we're dealing with objects, public access things, um, you can just put the name of the object you're dealing with, in this case, temp car, and then dot name. So that's very useful. Now, we're going to do another C out, and we're going to ask, um, let's see, number of windows. And apparently somebody's asking me something in IRC. Um, hang on just a moment while I handle that. <laughs> okay, and apparently that was just an automated notification, so no worries. All right, and then we're going to do a simple C in for temp car dot num windows and apparently I couldn't spell windows up there nor down here so we're going to do another C out number of wheels cn temp car dot num wheels and then C out, um, last one was miles per gallon, so say MPG. Temp car dot MPG. Sorry, it's been a long day for me. So, just another thing, we are going to add in another CN dot ignore here. All that's doing is making it so when we hit enter after we do a C in, that it just ignores that new line character. Um, because if we iterate through this loop, it's going to go back to get line. And if you have a new line character there, or a return carry as it's known, it will actually skip this because the get line is still in the buffer, or the, the return carry is still in the buffer. Um, that comes down the line with a uh, IO. But anyways, so what we need to do here is we then take temp car and we need to put it into this vector. And the way that we've always done that is we've done car vec dot push and I'm sorry I didn't capitalize that dot push back temp car and that's it that's all we need to do 
for to uh, to fill up this vector with car objects. Now the rest is going to be really dense. Um, I have five minutes, so I'm really gonna have to breeze through this. Now I want you guys to pay very keen attention because this is going to be very hard and I really don't have enough time for this in a 15 minute video, but I'm going to try. We're going to set car iter, which is the car iterator, equal to car vec dot begin. Then we're going to say as long as car vec or car iter, I'm sorry, does not equal car vec dot end car iter plus plus now there you guys probably remember what we did with pointers although I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on them that was probably a problem on my behalf but this is going to be a C out statement where instead of using pointers, we're going to be dereferencing in another way. You remember the dereference operator was our multiplication symbol. Well, iterators have a different dereference symbol, and it's it's actually really easy to remember. It's just strange when you first see it because it doesn't look like anything else we've dealt with. So first off, we're going to output car number and then we're going to output car iter minus car vec dot begin I cannot spell begin for the life of me today and then we're going to add an end l we're going to see out and this is where things are going to get a little bit difficult number of, uh, actually no, we need to do it. Uh, we don't need to do it in order, but I would like to. Um, name of car. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take car iter, and then we're going to do sort of like an arrow pointing to name. And then we're going to do an end L. And now I'm just going to copy paste this a few times because uh, I'm not going to really have time to do this uh, if I don't. So you guys are going to have to forgive me. Number of windows and number of wheels. So in this case, I'm just going to switch that to num windows and num wheels. So, pretty simple. And that's honestly all we have to do. I'm just going to add in two more endels there to uh, separate. I need another streaming character there. And I think that should just about do it. And I have, wow, a whole minute. Did I code it right? And Wow, in one try. Amazing. So I'm going to add one car. It's going to be a Porsche going to have two windows, four wheels, and it's going to get 12 miles to the gallon. And there you have it. Oh, and I didn't output MPG. Oopsies. Okay, so we're going to just copy that. See out. MPG. And we're going to do car iter. MPG and one more endel and i'll see if i can run this really quickly yikes oh god and i would like to add two cars porsche four windows two wheels 15 miles to the gallon dodge uh four windows two wheels which is the wrong way around 10 miles to the gallon and you see that it printed out beautifully there Thank you for watching. I am Damien. I will comment this better. Uh, please check out more videos. Good luck learning this.